That's right. How can Prime Minister Modi save lives and livelihood? Jan and Jahan are both important now. We are reaching a critical stage in the battle against coronavirus. We have more in a moment. But first, let's go straight across to tell you the overall All India cases as we look at it at the moment. Total cases now across the country stand at 9,352. Deaths are 324. So they've crossed the 300 mark. Last 24 hours, and this is significant, new cases 796. So a slight increase there. Deaths are 35. The worst hit states remain the same. Maharashtra total cases 1,985. Deaths 149. Delhi total cases 1,154. Deaths are 24. Tamil Nadu total cases 1,075. Deaths are 11. This is as of the 13th of April. That's today, 8.30 p.m. Tonight, we are going to look at that big question of lives and livelihoods. How can lockdown 2.0 perhaps ease the restrictions even while saving lives? I'll be joined by, among others, Amit Mitra, the Finance Minister of West Bengal. Dr. Preeti Kumar is VP Public Health Systems Support. I'm also joined by Suman Sinha, Chairman MD Renew Power. Shamika Ravi was a member of the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council, Director of Research at Brookings India. Ajay Veer Jakhar, someone who's really tracked the agriculture sector closely, will also join us. And Professor Sitabra Sinha is the one who's done a significant study at the Chennai Mathematical Institute that suggests that the curve may be flattened. We'll go to our guests in a moment, but I want to focus on that big question today. The question of lives and livelihoods. That's our top story because tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., Mr. Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister of the country, will deliver his third Corona address. That's right. The big breaking that we are getting with the Prime Minister addressing the nation tomorrow, we're getting some exclusive details of what the Prime Minister intends to do. Apart from extending the lockdown for two more weeks, sources now telling India today that the exemption may be far greater than imagined. Sources now saying harvest, procurement, transportation of agriculture produced to be exempted. Sources also saying industrial sectors like MSMEs, those linked to health, essential services, fertilizers will get exemptions. Importantly, states will be allowed to decide if they want to exempt certain districts from the harsh restrictions. There is still no clarity though on resuming rail and air services. I want to go to Rahul Srivastava, National Affairs Editor, for a quick update on that. Rahul, how far is the Prime Minister willing to go to lift any easing of the restrictions in this lockdown? How far is he willing to go? Will air, transport services also be part of the easing of restrictions? Rajdeep, I think one of the most unprecedented exercises in terms of act activities uh, which are part of a nation and also responsibility is going to get started, I think, once the uh, extension of the lockdown is announced by the Prime Minister. Why I say that, when the Prime Minister said life and livelihood, the last time around, it did not include those who provide the livelihood. And the, the clampdown was complete. And this time around, what is very clear, that the Prime Minister will have to look at the issue of those who provide, say, 42% employment in this country, that's the manufacturing, other industry, and services. If the system is not brought on stream, Mr. Amit Mitra is, sitting, is going to discuss with you, uh, the states are losing tremendous revenue, Rajdeep. Liquor sales are virtually zero. Fuel sales are almost two-thirds down. The states are not getting revenue. The GST picture, because of low retail, is very pure. The states will not get money in the recent future. Is coming he willing, future. No, but is and he willing to lift those restrictions? Is, how far is the Prime Minister willing to go? Rajdeep, one can't prejudge the mind of this Prime Minister, at least. So that's why I will say that 11 empowered committees, one group of ministers, thousands of suggestions have broadly given a picture. There are some 15-odd industries and sectors which might see certain relaxations with a huge amount of social distancing protocols. Why I say that? For example, people who can house the people inside their premises. Those who can ensure that people can be transported with proper protocols. Right. Those who can ensure sanitization. Those who are essentials, Rajdeep. We miss out a lot of things in essentials. Like, for example, LPG gas burners. They are essential, Rajdeep, because there is breakages, there is replacement and others. So what I will say, a huge exercise in identifying what can be allowed to be manufactured, under what conditions, in what area. Okay. I think the government is looking at revenue generation and economic activity very seriously. Transportation is one element, Rajdeep. 
airlines no clarity Trans interstate uh, movement of transport no clarity and on railways one lot to wait and see okay Rahul Srivastava joining us with those details. Remember, 10 a.m. tomorrow is when the Prime Minister delivers that address. Now, our focus is on that at the moment. We've been focusing on the medical angle for days. Today, it's time to turn our gaze to what's happening to the economy. Remember, India's industrial sector, which was already battered by the economic slowdown, has taken a major hit due to the coronavirus lockdown. The units are shut, workers jobless, their future bleak. Today, our special report and our top story is on the economic lockdown this country is confronted with. Take a look. The nationwide lockdown that has lasted three weeks has triggered a mini collapse of the industrial sector. And resurrecting it could become an uphill task with thousands of migrant laborers and workers fleeing to their villages. The Badli industrial area in the national capital is a hub for small and medium scale industries. The entire area today wears a deserted look. जीवन अच्छा चल रहा था, अच्छे कमाते खाते से बहुत परेशानी आ गया इसमें। जो पर काम किए थे तो मिल गया था थोड़ा बहुत पैसा उसी से निकाल रहा हूँ समय को। Bawana is another MSME hub of the national capital. Most of the units are locked with no movement except for essential supplies. Entire operation in these industrial industrial units are shut down except the very few which are uh, related to the essential services including bread, milk, butter and other food items. Largely all other activities, economic activities, manufacturing activities are completely shut down. When thousands of daily wagers left Delhi, Ramesh and his family were among the few who stayed back instead of walking to their village in Madhya Pradesh. He's now concerned about what next in making a living. हम नहीं जा पाए वहाँ मध्य प्रदेश वापस और बच्चे हैं साहब वो पैसे भी नहीं है हमारे पास में ना हमारी कोई सरकार सुविधा कर रही है इंडस्ट्रियल एक्टिविटीज इन गुरुग्राम लाइक इन अदर पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री हैव कम टू अ हॉल्ट मोस्ट ऑफ द फैक्ट्रीज हैव कैंसल देयर ऑर्डर बुक्स फॉर एटलीस्ट द नेक्स्ट टू मंथ्स जब तक ये बड़ी इंडस्ट्री हमारी नहीं खुल जाती उसके अलावा हम छोटी इंडस्ट्री को खोलने का हमारा कोई बेनिफिट नहीं मिलता ये तो लॉकडाउन खुलने के बाद में लेबर हमारी कितनी आ पाती है और उनके लिए सरकार क्या क्या साधन देती है आने जाने का सुविधा मिलती है नहीं मिलती है ये उसके बाद जाकर डिपेंड हो पाएगा इन गुजरात द माइक्रो स्मॉल एंड मीडियम एंटरप्राइजेज आर ऑन द वर्ज ऑफ क्लोजर ऑलरेडी बैटर्ड बाई द स्लो डाउन द एम एस एम ईज आर स्टेयरिंग एट एन अनसर्टन फ्यूचर द की कंसर्न रिमेन क्लोजर ऑफ स्टेट बॉर्डर्स एंड शॉर्टेज ऑफ वर्क फोर्स रॉ मटेरियल हमें कहां से सप्लाई होगा क्योंकि इंटरस्टेट बॉर्डर सब जैम है चलो कच्चा मल कहीं तरह से भी हमारे पास स्टॉक में पड़ा है तो हम लोग उसको मैन्युफैक्चरिंग करेंगे तो उसको हम लोग सेल आउट कहां पर करेंगे ये एक बड़ी प्रॉब्लम है द कन्फेडरेशन ऑफ इंडियन इंडस्ट्री और सी आई आई इन इट्स रिप्रेजेंटेशन टू द गवर्नमेंट हैज सजेस्टेड ईजिंग रिस्ट्रिक्शन टू रिवाइव सम इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज we need to prioritize industrial sectors to minimize the economic impact of the lockdown affecting jobs affecting our exports affecting our livelihood we would suggest that the government uh, announce an economic package for the industry along with the timetable which will be set for this exit all eyes are now on prime minister narendra modi set to address the nation on tuesday morning He's likely to outline the measures to save not just lives but also livelihoods. With Ashutosh in Delhi and Gopi Maniar in Ahmedabad, Bureau Report, India Today. So industry struggling, also agriculture. Remember, today was the start of the harvesting festival, Baisakhi, Bihu, across the country. But the fact is there was no harvesting taking place in large parts of the country. So both manufacturing and agriculture have been hit by lockdown 1.0. Thousands of trucks still are struck at the borders of the country, of, of state borders. Other side farmers entering the crucial time of the year with no guarantee of having the supply links in place. So what will lockdown 2.20 look like? Let's raise the big questions tonight. How to balance Jaan and Jahan? lives and livelihood that's the big question what will be prime minister's modi formula lockdown in phases is it a solution do we have an exit plan at all in place is it time for bigger income schemes should the government plan a mega stimulus for industry just some of the questions i want to raise tonight 
I'm joined by Dr. Amit Mitra. I spoke to him earlier, Finance Minister West Bengal. Dr. Preeti Kumar is VP Public Health System Support. Suman Sinha, Chairman and MD Renew Power. Shamika Ravi, Director of Research Brookings India, was also part of the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council earlier. Ajay Veer Jakhar is Chairman, Bharat Krishak Samaj. And Professor Sitabra Sinha is from the Institute of Mathematical Sciences in Chennai. I'll come to you all in a moment, but I want you to listen first to Dr. Amit Mitra, whom I spoke to earlier. And I asked the West Bengal uh, Chief uh, Finance Minister this very question. The big challenge at the moment, saving lives, but also saving livelihoods. Industry shut down, agriculture not taking off. Do you believe now the time has come for some kind of balance in lockdown 2.0 between saving lives and saving livelihoods, Dr. Mitra? I think, uh, Rajiv ji, we have a hydra-headed war in front of us. Mm -hmm. Not a single head, but clearly two heads, as you correctly said. Save lives from corona and save lives from collapse of livelihood of the economy, which will also take lives. So we have to face these two. And for this, there's... Uh, the lockdown will have to be with a human face. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's a big challenge. And let me point out also that this is a dynamic process. Mm -hmm. We have found that there are hot spots which begins to shift. So putting colors on them alone is not enough because some areas will be affected. Others would be affected less. And then this hydra-headed war will shift particularly the COVID-19 process. Now, how do we get the economy moving while we fight this war? No, no, That's not the question you're asking. My question to you is very simple. Today you're telling me lockdown with a human touch. In your own state of Bengal, Jude tea workers are losing their jobs. Daily wage workers are losing their jobs. How do you ensure their jobs are protected in times of lockdown if there is no economic activity? That's the question I'm asking. I think, first of all, the tea, you'll be happy to know that the tea gardens are now opening with 25% of labor force picking tea with distancing norms. So that's a good news for you. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as others are concerned, we are already functioning with all the basic facilities and essentials in our state. You'd be happy to know that this is something that four days before the Prime Minister announced the lockdown, mm -hmm. Mamta Banerjee had announced a lockdown which was with a human face. Now we are carrying that on. Now you talked about jute. By the way, there are 57 jute mills in West Bengal, each employing normally four to 5,000 people. Now to put them into, a, into the danger of the first hydra head, which is corona, is going to be very, very dangerous. So again, we will have to look at it cautiously, step by step, mm -hmm. depending on where they are and whether there is an acute situation there with the dynamics of the coronavirus. Yes. So we are doing it very carefully. And let me also tell you, what we have done is we have already given, for your information, six months, six months of free ration so poor who are very important to us mm -hmm. can get six months of free ration old a, old age pension and widow pension we've already given them advance for two months with a human face free medical treatment of every nature including diagnostics across the state has been mm -hmm. what mamta banerji did some several years ago and of course 41 uh, spe uh, super specialty hospitals How? at the block come subdivisional level is now becoming very handy. Dr. Mitra. So my submission to you is. Dr. Mitra. This my, is where it is. My point to you is very simple. All of this is well, and these are good steps on social security, but how do you get industry to resume operations at 20 to 25 percent, which the government now wants, or a report of the industry ministry now wants? How do you get agriculture to get kick-started? How do you incentivize industry to get people back to work? That's the question. That's going to be the big challenge, surely, before uh, lockdown 2.0. Manufacturing, how does that get revived? 
I think the key point here that you're making is we need, first of all, a massive input from the center, which is resources is what we'll talk. Mm -hmm. We need resources for uh, Corona across the country in all states. Mm -hmm. And we need resources in order to create the conditions for slow and steadily mm -hmm. maintaining the economy. Now, let me give you an example. Mamata Energy has talked about 10 lakh crores package, mm -hmm. which is 6% of GDP. That's the resource you need. Now, United States has done 10%, UK 15% of GDP, Japan has done 20% of GDP. First weapon in this war is resources. We are only saying 6%. And let me tell you, we can do it. Why? Because we have headroom. First of all, our debt GDP ratio, mm -hmm. which is 107% in United States, 234% in Japan is only 69%. So that's one headroom. Oil prices are low. And as you know, we are big importers of oil. 85% of oil comes from abroad. Again, there we have a headroom. And foreign, uh, foreign reserves are at the highest today. So basically, the first challenge is, how do you put 10 lakh crores on the ground mm -hmm. and then spread it on both these counts to fight COVID and to energize slowly, steadily, cautiously, you're calling, maturely you're calling? the process of opening up industry? You'll be happy to know mm -hmm. that you've already done so very cautiously where it is judicious to do so. And I've given you the tea garden example. Small and medium enterprises need liquidity, sir. They will die without liquidity. They cannot pay salaries to their workers because the bigger industry hasn't paid them because they don't have the current resources to do that. All boils down to a massive resource growth, never seen, unprecedented, but 6% of GDP is what the central government has to have the courage to do today there's no time for procrastination. Now what? or never. Now or never. And that will come back into the state. Now to fight or this big words fight from you. Process. Dr. Mitra, now or never. Let me ask you, what is there for that one big thing that you want from the Prime Minister tomorrow in this battle, as I'm calling it, between Jahan and Jahan, lives or livelihoods? What do you want to see from the Prime Minister tomorrow? Very quickly. I think the uh, first and foremost is a package of 10 lakh crores. Let me also tell you, number two, Reserve Bank of India has to be told, please take a leaf from the Federal Reserve of United States. You know what they're giving? 2.3 trillion US dollars. We, our Reserve Bank has to stretch out outside of its remit. Mm -hmm. The chairman of the Federal Reserve has said, this is not the time to just look at liquidity mm -hmm. and maintaining structure. This is the time to directly lend. Can you imagine the Reserve, Federal Reserve of the United States is directly lending to small and medium enterprises for four years loan with one year moratorium. So I would request the Honorable Prime Minister also to look at, to the Honorable Union Finance Minister, Reserve Bank of India, let it step out of its Lakshman Rekha and stretch out in order to do what the other banks are doing. So 10 lakh crores from the government of India, right. Reserve Bank given an open process to lend directly to states, to small and medium enterprises, as well as to large, larger sized enterprises, four years loan with one year moratorium. Can you do it? If you can, you will turn the corner. And of course, hospitals, the entire health system, we are hoping to hear the Prime Minister will say, right. what is that health system going to look like? If you cannot, if you order 5 lakh PPEs and you get 3,000 from the center, you'll be happy to know our small and medium enterprises have produced 3 lakh PPEs. Therefore, we are managing, but we need 5 lakh more. So let the Prime Minister say that the government of India will provide to the state, which has no revenue coming, no borrowing possibility. He has not announce anything on the capacity to borrow. It's only 3% of GDP. Mamta Banerjee has asked for 5% of GDP. No announcement so far. 
we'd be very happy if the loanable funds to the state has increased, hospitals taken care of, 10 lakh crores is the big requirement today, and Reserve Bank of India joins the government of India, as it has done in the Federal Reserve, in this fight to win the Hydra-headed attack on us. You're calling Corona, it a lives on one side and lives from livelihood saving on the other. Okay, strong words there from Amit Mitra saying Hydra-headed monster, we need to do much more. 10 lakh crores needs to be pumped into the economy. Do you agree with that, Shamika Ravi? You were formerly part of the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council. Has the focus now in the Prime Minister's address to be as much on reviving the animal spirits of the economy, if they exist at all now, along with also saving lives? Well, let's start by first looking at, you know, the steps taken over the last several weeks have been absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it was good that the national government was uh, preemptive and proactive in that sense. Uh, but moving forward, uh, I do think we have to go back to the federal nature of this country to look for solutions. Uh, you know, besides the fiscal strength of the different uh, uh, state governments, it's also important to get a reality check on the variations we have in this country in terms of the health infrastructure itself. So public health uh, strength and state capacity varies a great deal from state to state. And in that sense, and frankly, so is, um, uh, you know, the details, if you look at how well was the lockdown implemented in itself, uh, I think a large part of it, really, the responsibility does uh, sit with the not just the state, but also the local administration. So the third tier of the government, uh, whether in rural or in urban local bodies. So we have to really, you know, we need every arm of the government, uh, every tier of the government to really perform uh, at its optimum. But what gets the priority? Now, what, my, my point, Ms. Ravi, is what gets the priority now? Is it to focus on reviving economy? Is it to get 20, 25% at least of manufacturing back on track? Maybe restore an element of transport services, get the supply links going? Or is it to focus on a strict, tough lockdown to save more lives? No, I, I do not uh, advise a strict national level lockdown uh, continuing. Uh, again, I think the call has to be taken by the state governments because they know what their state capacity and what is the mm -hmm. uh, extent of the problem that each of them, if you just look at it, the overall burden of the infection seems very similar in Maharashtra and Kerala. Mm -hmm. But look at the mortality rates. The Kerala is one-sixth of Maharashtra. Right? I mean, so you'll, you'll have tremendous variations across the so state. So you're saying one size uh, doesn't fit all, have different... Not at all. Allow not the state all, government... So should, we, should he allow the state governments the autonomy? Should he allow different state you governments know, the autonomy reason, to decide how to interpret the health lockdown? Is a, health is a state subject for a reason, uh, uh, Rajdeep. And I think it's important to invoke those reasons. I think, of course, this is a national calamity and the coming together of 1.38 billion people right. towards this common cause. And because you have ICMR and the central level... Uh, you know, not just the testing, but the maneuvering and sort of strategy formation, all very required. But moving forward, uh, states have to take that call. That's number one. Number two, you know, you also have to compare and be a little objective. You know, we are not facing the crisis the way the OECD countries are. Uh, it could be on account of the early measures. It could be on account of temperature, humidity. God knows what it is, but the data definitely is telling us that the severity of this infection, this outbreak, in India is nowhere close to what the OECD countries are currently let struggling. Me, right? Let me stop. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's, no, no, let me it's stop you for a moment on that. Because that's an important yeah. point that you've raised. And I'll come back because we've got Professor Sitabra Sina who's joining us. I just want to, before I come to the other guests, come to you, Professor, because you have put out today or a few days ago at the Institute of Mathematical Science in Chennai, you've done a survey which seems to suggest that the curve may be flattening. Do you really believe that this curve is flattening because of the lockdown and the moment I, the Prime Minister say announces tomorrow a slight uh, lifting of the lockdown, the numbers could rise again. What is your larger sense? Is it the lockdown that's responsible for these numbers being under control in India? All right, so first of all, uh, the growth rate of the epidemic in India so far, starting mm -hmm. from March 4th when our numbers first jumped to double digits, has been uh, kind of slightly lower than uh, the many of the countries in Europe and the United States. Right. Uh, 
for some reason, you know, we have been lucky so far. Uh, so what we observe is that while from March 4th until about April 5th, uh, the cases have been falling on an exponential growth curve which matches a uh, basic reproduction number R naught of 1.83. Let me just you know take a few seconds to explain, explain what it this to number our, means. No, explain it in lay terms to our viewers. You know, let yes. our viewers may not understand the mathematical nature of what you're saying. Sure. So. The basic reproduction number is the single most important mathematical quantity associated with understanding how an epidemic spreads. It tells you what's the average number of people that a single infected person passes on the infection to right. over the duration when this person is infectious. So, you know, if on average a person is infecting about 1.8 other people, you might think the number is small but it quickly builds up to a very large number because those people will then pass on the infection on average to 1.8 other people. So just imagine, like for example, each person infecting two other people. So those two will infect four, those four will infect eight, those eight will infect 16, and very soon you'd have so an you're, extremely large am number. Am I right to say that your survey suggests that the lockdown, if the lockdown was not in place, the numbers would be much, much higher. Therefore, the lockdown was necessary and needs to continue. Am I correct? Well, let the lockdown is obviously helped a bit in reducing the growth rate. So what we find is that over the past one week, the growth rate has reduced from what it was earlier to something which corresponds to about 1.5. So, okay. you know, earlier, you know, a typically infect person was infecting about 1.8 other people, whereas now it's infecting more okay, like 1.5 other people. So you're... Now, what... Now, what, 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 what this translates to is that, uh, let's say by 20th April, if the lockdown had not been there or if the, if the original growth curve had continued, we'd have something like 35,000 people uh, as active cases or in the worst case, about 50,000. Right. Now, if the present trend that we see over the past one week continues and it's not just a statistical fluke, we expect that by 20th April, we'd have something like 20,000 active cases. Right. Now, 20,000, 35,000, that's like, you know, essentially... So we that's, are that's, the numbers these almost. are the... But these are the kind of calls that need to be taken, of course, and that is where Shamika Ravi comes, that one size doesn't fit all. What's happening in the West may not be happening in India. Therefore, should, it, should we revive... Should we use this opportunity of a lockdown 2.0 to start easing restrictions in certain parts? What's your view, Suman Sinha? CII is suggesting that specific industries particularly need to get some kind of easing of restrictions. Do you believe 25% of manufacturing, for example, uh, is possible in the present environment? Where will the workers come from if they don't have transport? Rajdeep, these are very difficult questions. But just to take a step back, I think uh, India took a very proactive uh, step when we actually enforced the lockdown at a point when the number of cases was actually very small. I think that that has resulted in the whole evolution of this disease being much less than it might otherwise have been, and actually letting us, you know, getting us to a point three weeks later where we can actually have a discussion about whether we should open up or not. Had we not done the lockdown, clearly we would not even have been having this conversation. We would actually have been thinking about how much longer we need to have or how long do we need to have a lockdown for. So I think let's recognize that the lockdown has been very helpful in that regard. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, the reality also is that the longer the lockdown continues, the more livelihoods are going to be hit. And three weeks is already a long time. We know that India has a very large number of casual uh, laborers, uh, casually employed people mm -hmm. who uh, don't have very you know, contractually safe jobs. We also know that, that there are a lot of daily wage earners. And we also know that Indian industry was already not in a very robust position as we went into this, uh, into this whole crisis. Um, you know, a but how much, how much realistically, Suman Sinha, do you see an opening up? Given the fact that there are certain, do you believe certain areas should be marked out? Do you believe look, that certain think, industries yeah, should think, be marked out? Yeah, look, I think Rajiv, the way it has to work is that there are a number of districts in India where over the last, you know, several weeks there have been no cases. Now, if those districts can be isolated from other districts, if we don't have any, let's say, inter-district travel if you don't have any flights, if you don't have any trains, right. then there's no reason why those districts which have not had any cases so far, why they can't be opened up. And why industries in those, in those and any, any business for that matter, small businesses, 
kirana shops malls etc why they should not get opened up so i think that is step number 1 right the second point is that there are certain districts where the, where, where, where there have been very few cases mm -hmm. let's call them the green districts as is being thought to be uh, you know categorized right those districts as well perhaps where there are few cases um, those can also potentially be opened up and maybe in those cases you open up fewer things fewer establishments and so i think you have to look at this whole thing on a graded basis i take you have to the most the most infected districts and perhaps not open them up at all just extend the current lockdown that exists for another at least two more weeks and try to make sure, sure. that the i's down very you know suman your point is well taken remember those include india's commercial capital mumbai which is seeing high uh, high number of corona virus cases it includes delhi but as you rightly said there are districts which are not affected ajay veer jakhad today was baisakhi in punjab many uh, farmers could not begin the harvesting process do you believe that th the prime minister will need to do certain will need to provide certain specific very specific incentives now to ensure that agriculture for example that the supply links get once again connected otherwise if there are no if there is no labor or if there is no market to which no mandi to which the farmer can take his harvest how do you revive agriculture i i completely agree with you farmers are in distress and that's that's not in question here the question is what are we going to do going ahead especially with the harvest coming into punjab and haryana this was supposed to have started as you're saying has been delayed because of the lockdown now both the governments have written to the central government to provide financial assistance to farmers mm -hmm. to delay the harvest beyond 31st of may and that's the way you will stop spread of corona virus i think so all the discussions that we see are happening is should the lockdown be extended or not i think so this is not what the prime minister is supposed to do tomorrow states are already deciding on extending or not extending the lockdown so it's in the states preview i think i think the, the farmers and the rest of the country the migrant labor the fa the industry everyone's looking for a financial incentive from the prime minister and uh, specifically uh, speaking of farmers we need Uh, at least a uh, 25 to 30 rupee quantal incentive for farmers to get their harvest to the markets, mm -hmm. uh, especially for wheat beyond 31st of May in the month of June. And uh, the Prime Minister must keep in mind that all farmers who are growing perishable uh, produce like mangoes, grapes, watermelon, musk melon, tomatoes, all these producers did not find a market and they had to rot on the ground. So right. I hope the financial package he gives includes something like five to ten thousand rupees per you know, farmer per farm worker in that package. So you're looking for a package for for the farm sector, Dr. Preeti Kumar. While the economists and those involved in agriculture industry look at packages, what about those in the health sector? As a public health specialist, what do y'all look? What are y'all looking at? Do you believe social distancing and revival of economic activity can go together? Is that possible in a country like India? Absolutely. Um, one of the things that uh, people in the public health sector have been saying for a very long time is that public health is actually to be embedded in every other sector. And probably one of the uh, lessons that has come out from COVID is how inextricably our lives are linked with health and our livelihoods. So moving forward within the health sector also, while we manage through the lockdown COVID. there are other issues in the health that will come to escalate after some time uh, because of this lockdown other areas of health are been uh, sidelined uh, out of the sheer necessity of uh, needing to focus and uh, managing uh, this uh, uh, managing covid so no but how do you man my point is how do you how do you manage the basic concept of a lockdown in covid is social distancing Yes. Once, once you revive the economy, once you allow manufacturing, once you open up the airlines, what happens to social distancing? And it can absolutely be done at a graded response. Uh, all the speakers before me have been talking about it. There would be a need for reviving those livelihood areas where there is a potential for. um uh, social distancing being made for example gurgaon uh, the the industrial hub of gurgaon the yes. commercial hub of gurgaon is essentially the area which is the red zone but that is also an opportunity for reviving all the work which has been going on because that gives an opportunity for people to work out of home and maintain physical distancing so i think we need to have a realistic um, uh, no, but idea my, i i take your point my my worry shamika ravi is that you know are we living in an impractical world mumbai the country's commercial capital today is the worst affected, affected shamika ravi how does mumbai revive itself 
if large parts of Mumbai remain under a lockdown, if they are sealed, ditto with Delhi. I mean, I'm just trying to understand. Yes, there are certain parts of the country, possibly northeast, possibly other parts which are relatively untouched. You could possibly consider reviving economy there, but you need eventually a national revival. That can't happen when Mumbai and Delhi are under lockdown. Well, but unfortunately, these are hotspots, uh, Rajdeep. And it's important to realize that given the uncertainty from the health side, I think I, I am a big believer that given the uncertainty on the health side, we need to front load our economic uh, responses. Mm -hmm. uh, but Delhi, Mumbai, Delhi, Mumbai, the nature break is such that one will have to go into very careful isolation and uh, surveillance and mm -hmm. uh, extremely aggressive testing uh, within these areas to make sure that the contagion is controlled. So, so you're saying that, you know, you're going to have to do the aggressive testing, you're going to have to continue the war on Corona even while you try to revive the economy. This is the real challenge in a way that confronts the Prime Minister tomorrow. I think all my panelists are very clear, you need a graded response. You need a calculated graded response now. You cannot now have a one-size-fits-all national lockdown. Am I, is that an agreement, Suman, very quickly, yes or no? Agree to a graded response? Look, I think that's absolutely right. We can't have a one-size-fits-all strategy any longer. I think there are too many lives at stake and too many issues at stake right now. Okay. Graded response, then, is perhaps the way forward. That's why now we are entering the most critical phase of the lockdown. Lockdown 2.0 is going to be even more important in a way than lockdown 1.0 to save lives along with livelihoods. Thank you all very much for joining me on my talking point here tonight. Let's take a break. When we return, on the other side, we're going to tell you about our Corona heroes in Khaki. It's our continuing focus on the Corona Warriors. In the